Congressional leaders said late this week there will be yet another relief package on the way as states scramble for resources and equipment to keep up with the coronavirus toll. South Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz is Skyping with us today from Weston. Good morning. Great to see you, Congresswoman. Good morning, Glenna. You too. Thanks for having me. So I want to start, uh, we'll get to that in just a minute, but I want to start with a town hall that you ha uh, had on Friday with uh, state rep. Chevron Jones, who um, had this sort of remote town hall and something that you said really struck me that uh, you've been surprised that despite all of these stay at home orders, how many people are still out and about? What have you seen? Uh, can we check if the Congresswoman can hear us well? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Yes, Glenn, I heard your question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, um, we, we, I had to deal with a, uh, with a family emergency and thus had to uh, to travel not only through my town, hometown of Weston, but all the way down to uh, to South Miami. And Glenna, um, it was disturbing how much traffic uh, was on not only the roads in my hometown, but on I-75, on the Turnpike Extension, uh, on on US-1. I mean, it, it's the, the, the problem, I, I think, is in large part because Governor DeSantis has issued a statewide stay-at-home stay order that isn't really in order because there's nothing enforceable about it. Um, and it has so many loopholes, so many ex exemptions for businesses deemed essential that really shouldn't be, that we have a lot of people both not taking this seriously and not staying home, and too many people on the road uh, out and about as if there really isn't anything wrong. And we have the, this is the third largest state in the country, and we, we have a growing problem whose apex has not been reached. And I'm concerned that Governor DeSantis' policies have, are not doing everything we can to flatten the curve. You know, we spoke a little bit about that with the lieutenant governor. I'm not quite sure if you were able to hear our interview earlier no. in the show. But what do you think about the, uh, the statewide order is one order. There is a patchwork all over South Florida, cities and municipalities of stay-at-home orders that some are stronger than that one from the state. But where does personal responsibility come in? Do we really need orders for people to do what they're supposed to do to keep safe? Certainly personal responsibility is important, but you're going to have personal responsibility that is taken more seriously and people will actually abide by it if you have the orders from the top and the guidance from the top. There has been nothing certain about what Governor DeSantis has been saying throughout this. He still hasn't issued a statewide beach closure. I mean, you actually, on some beaches, I believe Volusia County's beaches are still open. There are a number of other beaches that are still open. That's, that's outrageous. He exempted churches, and we have people, as we speak, who are gathered in churches across the state of Florida. Many have been responsible and ha or are able to conduct virtual services. But, Glenna, even the Pope has been preaching to you know, empty, an empty public, public square uh, and recognizing the importance of the social distancing and associating and interacting only with people with whom you need to. So, uh, unfortunately, the governor's directions have been as clear as mud. And then he issued some kind of, you know, second order that, at one point, he s says in the in the in the actual document that it supersedes local order orders. But then he says, well, he meant it as a floor. But that's not what it says. So how are people supposed to know what to do and take personal responsibility with a Swiss cheese approach? to making sure that we can keep people safe. I, I, I want to I want to uh, talk about the, the stimulus bills, both past and future. We uh, sure. were one of your colleagues, Debbie Mukarsel Powell, was with us last week. She talk, spoke a little bit about a fourth bill that was on the way. And this week, Senate leader yes. Mitch McConnell said Congress should really right now focus on the shortcomings in the $2.2 trillion relief package that was just passed. W what do you see as those shortcomings? What do you think that's about? Well, I don't think we have a uh, focus, a need to focus on shortcomings. Uh, certainly, if we were going to, a shortcoming is that we have businesses that are far too large that were that were uh, allowed into this initial small business assistance. I mean, businesses that have as many as 500 employees, while they certainly need help, because we only uh, appropriate about $350 billion, and it's first come, first serve. You're going to have the more well-organized, larger businesses uh, defined as small here eat up those funds quickly. So we're going to need to make sure that we go in and provide a lot more resources and make sure that we can, in my view, put let language into the law that says that 
We're going to start with those smaller businesses who are really going to get the short end of the stick if they don't have the personnel to get up and running and make sure they can get on top of this uh, applying for these funds. We, we also have a need to really add funding to all of the other programs, the economic injury disaster loans, the, uh, the, the, the pandemic payments that, that, uh, that, that were included. We're really going to need a, a lot more resources because we're going to be in this far longer than right now the president seems to be willing to predict. And if states like Florida don't have stricter observation and orders from the top that we need to observe and stay away from each other uh, for longer, we're going to be in this longer than we need to. I will say the president this week did say he expects this to be the worst week yet. Has there been any talk about where the money comes from and how big the deficit can get and what that might look like in, a, in the post-pandemic rebuilding? Well, this is why we should not have passed, when the Republicans were in the majority, a massive tax break uh, package for you know, millionaires, billionaires, and large corporations that was completely unpaid for. That blew a larger hole in the deficit. So, but, you know, um, that, that what's done is done. When it comes to emergency funding, we have to focus on making sure we can appropriate those funds and get, get them out fast. I do want to mention the unemployment insurance disaster that we have here in Florida as well, though, because that's the volume of calls that I'm getting into my office, Lena. Uh, Rick Scott, when he was governor, completely broke the unemployment compensation system, and Ron DeSantis, unfortunately, didn't fix it. And so you have people who can't get onto the website. They've been trying for weeks. They have to stay up. Stories I'm told on my telephone town hall the other day. Someone got on when they stayed up till four in the morning uh, to try to log on. They've had to resort to saying that people can fill out their application on paper, but they have nowhere to deliver it. And they can't submit it online yet because there's no mechanism to do that. And by the way, they can't find the application on a mobile device. That's in the specific instructions. So, yeah. you know, why didn't Ron DeSantis get upset about fixing this system? which Rick Scott, Scott designed to actually uh, douse the numbers of unemployed. You know, we've had 250,000 people who filed for benefits in our state, yes. but that's a very low number. Uh, because of how difficult it has been to log on to the Yeah, we, we actually, and we're getting those calls. You're right, we're getting those calls every day, all day. And we did address that with the lieutenant governor, and, and she had outlined a couple of things that they're trying, and we absolutely will be watching that. Congresswoman, thank you so much. Great to have you with us. You're welcome. Appreciate your time. 